Hello guys, do you think it would be possible to train a multi-label text classifier with 50 target classes and using only about 100 labeled examples and still get significantly good performance? Recent transformer-based architecture such as BERT or bidirectional encoder representations from transformers are used in wide ranges of natural language processing tasks, including text classifications. However it requires significant amount of annotated examples to fine-tune the BERT model to achieve good performance. In this particular setup the traditional BERT model got an accuracy of 13% for classifying 50 target classes with only 100 annotated examples, pretty bad right? In real scenario getting expert annotated high quality labeled examples is very expensive and time consuming, but in contrast, the unlabeled examples characterizing the target task can be very easily collected. In technical term. These unlabeled examples should follow the distribution of the labeled examples. We will see next how these unlabeled examples can be utilized to improve the performance of the text classification. In this demo we will adapt SAMI supervised learning to fine-tune BERT model with a vast number of unlabeled examples. We would like to acknowledge the authors of this paper, Gan BERT. Generative Adversarial Learning for Robust Text Classification for suggesting this efficient approach for classifying textual data with a bunch of annotated examples. Let's take a look at the suggested model architecture for the approach. This is essentially a semi-supervised GAN architecture where the labeled or unlabeled textual examples are represented by BERT model and the generator is used to generate fake examples and a discriminator is expected to classify the data. Now take a look with an example how it is actually working. Consider a text classification task where the target task has four categories, food, sports, politics, and education. The discriminator would take three kinds of inputs for making a prediction, first the representation of real and labeled examples, second the representation of real and unlabeled examples, and third the representation of fake examples generated by the generator and then it would predict either one of the four target classes, or the fake class. Take a real labeled example of food class as an input to the discriminator, then the discriminator could correctly predict it as food class or misclassified as one of the other four classes. The training process would try to rectify the model, more specifically the discriminator in case of misclassification. Now if the input is real and unlabeled data, the output prediction is fine as long as it belong to one of the four target classes, but the discriminator gets penalized only when it predicts as fake class. Now in case of fake input data, the discriminator would get penalized if it wrongly predicts the fake input as one of the four real target classes. Now for each of the misclassification there will be a loss associated with the discriminator, we termed it as discriminator loss. If the loss gets generated by labeled examples, then we categorize as supervised loss and in case of unlabeled or fake data we categorize the loss as unsupervised loss. Mathematically the discriminator supervised loss can be represented by this equation, where x and y are considered real, and the term inside the log function represents the probability of x being classified in one of the real target classes. However, the authors have not considered the supervised loss when a real examples get classified as fake by the discriminator. The unsupervised loss can be written as this equation, where the initial term measures the error when real unlabeled examples are misclassified as fake class, and the latter term measures the error when discriminator don't recognize fake input. The total loss is the sum over these two losses. Now take a look at the function of the generator. Its goal is to generate fake examples as similar as the real data, such that the discriminator should not identify it as fake examples. More technically the generator is expected to generate fake example representations that mimic the hidden representation of real data. There are two kinds of losses associated with the generator, the feature matching loss, that is basically the dissimilarity between the representations of real data and fake data which needs to be minimized during the training, and the unsupervised loss for the generator, 
that is the loss count for the generator when the discriminator correctly identifies the fake generated inputs as fake class. Finally the total loss for the generator is the sum of these two losses. During the training process we would try to optimize both the generator and discriminator loss. Now you might think that there is a sufficient amount of computational cost due to the incorporation of the generator. Let's have a look at the generator. It is basically a multilayered perceptron, that takes a 100-dimensional random Gaussian noise vector, and produces a 768-dimensional vector, which is same as BERT base model output dimension. So the total number of trainable parameters would be approximately 100,000, which is much smaller than the total number of parameters in a BERT base model. So the additional cost of complexity could said to be negligible. Another important point to note that, the generator would be excluded after training the whole model. So, during inference no computational cost will be required for the generator. To summarize the key use cases for GANBERT, it can be said that GANBERT is much more efficient for multi-class text classification, when there are less number of labeled data are available. Unlabeled data can be utilized to improve the model learning. It is very good for industrial use cases, where people tend to focus more on model performance, rather than the data itself, and it does not require any additional computation cost during inference. Now showing few experimental results of GANBERT in comparison to the state-of-the-art BERT model, direct from the paper. The datasets used here for the experiments are 20 news group and question classification data set. For each of the datasets, the authors tried to change the number of annotated example used for training both the BERT and GANBERT model and recorded accuracy and F1 scores. We can clearly observe that, for very less annotated examples, say 1% or 2% of the total data, BERT shows very poor performances where GANBERT improves the result significantly well. And also GANBERT consistently outperforms BERT results for all these datasets up to at least 30% of the annotated training data. To know more about the experimental setup and results, I would refer you to check out the paper. So, what's your views on GANBERT, please comment below. In the next video I will show how to use the GANBERT code to classify text data using the author provided data set, as well as any custom data set.